what did I tell you? I told you that Angel Studios was too gutless to go full Catholic on Cabrini in my movie review. I'm vindicated. I am vindicated by someone whom I know nothing about. I know nothing about this person except their name and the fact that they are a staff writer for National Review, Madeline Kearns. Well, I know nothing about her, but since she agrees with me and she supports me, I'm gonna call her wise and authoritative. Here's her article. The filmmakers lacked the confidence to portray faithfully the religious motivations of a great saint. What did I tell you? I told, this is the very thing I told you. Even Angel Studios does not have the guts to go full Catholic. What did I tell you? I told you that this movie lacked verisimilitude, that it did not portray faithfully the religious motivations of a great saint. This is what I told you. Now, the difference between Madeline Kearns and me is that not only is she a staff writer for the National Review, but she also did her homework. I merely kind of flew by the seat of my pants and relied on my Catholic upbringing, my Catholic education. She actually did read the, you know, these definitive authoritative sources that I said I would later read if I really wanted to get to know Cabrini. Uh, so anyway, yes. Yeah, so here's, here's Angel Studios. Angel Studios explains they wanted to capture the essence of Cabrini, but also to make a movie about an amazing woman who happened to be a nun. Kern says, unfortunately, those objectives are contradictory. Now, what did I tell you? I told you that the real story of a nun, it, it, if you want to watch a movie about it, is the nun story starring Audrey Hepburn, in which she not once, not one time, identifies herself as a woman first, or even as a woman in any way. Just a lamb of God. And here's Kearns quoting Cabrini in her own words. I appeal in a special way to the zeal of many Christian women who, who love Jesus to stir, okay, okay, the women because, you know, convent, uh, to stir into action the sacred flame burning within them, moving them with the, the, the sacred flame burning within them. And Kearns asks, does that sound like a woman who just happened to be a nun? Whose Catholic faith was incidental to her being a major girl boss? I told you this movie substituted new age garbage for doctrinal and religious rigor. In one scene, Mother Cabrini prepares her sisters who are accompanying her to New York saying, without men, we will be expected to fail. More than ever, we must trust in ourselves. Now, I told you, this is not what these what these nuns are all about. They don't, they don't draw on their inner strength. They, they draw on their faith and their trust in God. I told you this. Oh, and again, while we're here, all this supposed anti-feminism, all these men constantly looking down on these mere sisters, these mere nuns. And by the way, they are sisters, not nuns. That movie was all nun, nun, nun. They're sisters, not nuns. Anyway, despite, yeah, yeah. I said something like despite the, you know, whatever anti-feminism, you, you say what you want about the anti-feminism, anti-womanism in the Catholic church. Priests do not talk that way about sisters. Oh, the sisters are joining us? Good, because they use half the resources and get twice the work done. Everyone knows this. Anyway, another quote from Cabrini, bear in mind that whoever distrusts herself and trusts in God has nothing to fear because stripped of self, she has become strong with the strength of God. With humility and trust, she defies every heart. Again, this is what I told you about that movie, The Nun's Story with Audrey Hepburn. Her big struggle was with her ego. She needed to constantly strive for humility. All these travails in Africa, you know, working with the lepers and in, in New York with the, with the orphans, all, these are just the things they do in the world. The struggle is to serve God and to, and to just be perfect, to, to perfect yourself. To the extent that you're succeeding at that, you will succeed in your holy mission to help the poor the whatever it is. Yeah, and here's the actress saying on Instagram, women's empowerment means that all the power springs from us, the women, that we are our very own makers and have complete control over ourselves, our bodies, our minds, our life. No, no, I told you this is not, this is not how these people talk. So here comes Kearns with you know, like more quotes from Cabrini. Um, what, if our hearts are not humble, all the pious exercises prescribed by our institute will avail us nothing. You cannot live without Jesus, and so forth and so on. Oh, and then, remember I told you about the scene with the prostitute? Oh, remember? It, this, this prostitute is saying, I can't remember what she's saying, what, you know, what do you think of me, whatever. And Mother Cabrini says, uh, 
I, I see you, you know, as, as, a, as a fighter. You're, you're, you're a woman, you're a woman like me, a strong woman like me. You're, you're a survivor like me. I speak as someone who suffered through 12 years of Catholic school. I was taught by those people in habits from grades one through 12, and that ain't how they talk. No, it would be, you are a lamb of God who has strayed from the flock. And the Lord Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is searching for you even now. You must fall to your knees and confess your sins to him and let his love come over you and submit your will to his. Here's what Kern says. Or take the scene with the reformed prostitute who says to Mother Cabrini, there's not enough water in the world to make me clean. Cabr uh, Kern says, any competent nun would at such a prompting discuss the cleansing of sins through the waters of baptism and the sacramental graces of confession. What did I tell you? Monteverdi's Cabrini says instead, when I look at you, do you know what I see? A strong woman. That, that's exactly, these are exactly the lines that I complained about. And finally, Kern says, you know, despite this, I enjoyed Cabrini, she says, and I told you that too. I, I told you it was it was moving and it was it was good to see, you know, righteousness triumph. And she actually says, yes, performances were strong, etc. Story compelling, music was lovely, I don't care about that. But I think that this National Review staff writer has supported me. In fact, maybe she even got her ideas from me. I'll contact her and let you know. Anyway, while I'm here, just one more thing about, you know, verisimilitude. The, there's this one orphan in the story who is, well, he's orphaned because his mother died of typhus and his father subsequently shot himself. First of all, I don't know about devout Catholic fathers shooting themselves back in the night, you know, committing suicide at all in the 19th century. The dude would have been mentally ill. This is a horrible thing to leave a kid orphaned because you just can't go on? What, what do you think the kid's supposed to do? And the other thing, I think that in those days, People drowned themselves. The poor drowned themselves. They didn't grab a gun and shoot themselves. I think suicide by gun would be for a matter of honor by someone who was wealthy enough to own a gun. Where would a, where would a poor Italian get a gun back in those days? The main reason for that whole backstory was so that in a subsequent scene, the kid could, who, who has kept the, the gun that the father used shoots this pimp. Easy way to get rid of the pimp. And then Mother Cabrini tells the kid to throw the gun on the fire. Oh, no, we must, we, you know, you must never do this thing here. We will, we will burn this gun. Gun. I don't know what that, I don't know what putting a gun on a fire does to the gun besides heat it up. I guess maybe it might warp some parts that make it unshootable, but it certainly wouldn't make the gun disappear. Anyway, just thought I'd bring that up again because here I am. And another thing, I don't even know why this pimp was dead set on killing this prostitute who left him. And there's plenty more girls where she came from. Why does a pimp waylay a prostitute in a dark alley with a with kind of a second hand man, a henchman with him? To, to kill a prostitute? Why, why would they even, I mean, it's not like she's gone and, and exposed his operation or anything, anyway. But that's not what I want you to take away from this. What I want you to take away is that I'm just so full of myself. And don't call me Karen. Don't call me Little Miss Christian Karen. Or I will call your manager. <laughs>